If you follow this channel, you know I like a compact, efficient EV. So has Renault just announced the perfect family EV? Yesterday, the Scenic Electric has been made available for sale in the UK. Let's go through what's on offer, but I believe that this car ticks an incredibly large number of boxes. So first of all, it looks good enough. It's not amazing, but it's definitely not something that looks particularly ugly or that would be a problem. At 4.45 meters long, however, this is the perfect size and it has 545 liters of boot. In the UK for now, it's the larger battery that's on sale at 379 miles and that's a lot of range. It starts at £40,995 and that is actually not bad a price because the techno variant has all the things you would need and we are going to take a look at that in a minute. A second big box that's ticked by that car, like the Megane before, is that it has the Google Power itinerary optimization. So you've got a road planner. This is really something you can use. Very good stuff there. Right, so we're going to be building ours. But another thing that ticks a box for me is that you don't have to select a gazillion options that you pay for in addition. Yes, it's Renault, it's not BMW, it's not Mercedes, and it's not quite as fancy, but actually in the world of EV, not going fancy is the fancy thing to do. So they've made a real effort with the upholstery and say that there's quite a bit of recycled materials in there, about a quarter, I understand. And that is very good as well. Again, it's in the spirit of proper EVs. Now, another thing that's in the spirit is also the fact that it doesn't weigh 23 tons either. It's at 1.8 ton. And yes, it is a family car, but that is quite light still given the battery at 87 kilowatt hours, which is quite massive. I've tested the interior of the Megan and I found it very pleasant, very nice, nothing flashy, and that is something I appreciate as well. So what do you get in the entry-level techno variant, which I think is absolutely fine? Well, you get the 20 kilowatt AC charge, and that is super interesting for destination charging in France. It's quite big, and that was because of the Renault Zoe that really kick-started all of this. You've got a rapid charger at up to 150. We don't know exactly what the curve looks like, but it's supposed to be improved. And at a 150 peak, it's pretty good. Uh, it says 37 minutes from 0 to 80%. I think I've read somewhere. And that would put it in the 110 kilowatt on average between 10 and 80 percent and again that is sufficient if you're looking at a pretty decent car when it comes to efficiency and that car is rated by Renault as about 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer and again that is very good for a family car of course nothing will ever beat the likes of the Ionic and you're not looking at a sedan type car like the Tesla Model 3 right Let's view all the equipment we get in the Techno. So there is the heat pump, super important for me in that, again, I'm looking for efficiency and I know that the heat pump is a guarantee that in the winter, you are going to remain reasonably efficient. You are not gonna get those vast variation between the summer and the winter. There's the rear view camera, which has become a bit of a standard, but that's very important. Uh, you get the adaptive cruise control, which for me is becoming super important in the UK. You get a lot of stop start, you get a lot of traffic. Adaptive cruise control is something that I can really use. There are four levels of regenerative braking with the paddle shifters. And that we've seen on the Ionic is something that is very useful as well and quite enjoyable. 
you get your heated seats in the front and you get the heated steering wheel as well. Again, options that we use extensively in the Ionic, they bring additional efficiency to the car. You don't need to heat the whole cabin. In many cases, just the steering wheel and the heated seats that will do. You even get the electric power tailgate. I don't think that's a must, but it is a nice to have. Included in the price, you get a very nice color. I don't know if that's the one I would go for, but it's completely usable, a red, a nice red. And that's it, that's your car, it's all inclusive. Again, 41,000 is far from being cheap for a car, there is no question about that, but I think if you're gonna get it on Saturday Sacrifice as a company car, I think you'll find the leasing rates are going to be quite acceptable. I suspect that net of tax, you're probably not going to be paying more than 350. Is it interesting these days to buy a car on salary sacrifice because it is actually a pre-tax car? I might do a video. And yeah, here you go. It looks pretty decent. It is a nice size. It has the range. It has the charging capabilities in my book it's up there with some of the better cars in fact if you want to know more about the classification and how i get to scores of cars to understand which are the good ones from an efficiency perspective from a range perspective and from a charging power perspective and therefore are good for a 1000 kilometer trip well then let me know in the comments and I'll do more on that. For now, that was the Renault Scenic. I think it's pretty impressive. I'm interested. Tell me if you are in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.